up yo happy new month it's february already um it was a nice beautiful day outside today i got to go work out outside which i haven't done in a while loved every minute of it the sun just like love so much i loved it so much um happy black history month february 1st gotta come with them facts uh yeah, I don't have any yet, uh, but we'll, we'll get we'll get started. It's going to happen. But, um, I mean, there's so many. There's too many. It's 365 inventors. Uh, so, let's get right into this news. A man who attacked and beheaded a prevented statue put up by the Satanic Temple at Iowa's capital has now been charged with a felony under the state's hate crime status. So, he destroyed a Satanic Temple and got charged with a hate crime interesting florida judge dismisses disney's lawsuit against governor DeSantis over the dissolution of the former district companies maintained de facto we talked about this other day boy got bit by a shark boy swims in ocean boy gets bit by a shark senator bob menendez has seen his campaign fundraising employment and his legal fees skyrocket since he was indicated on bribery i wonder if he can cash in some of those gold bars he has a dozen people were injured after a serious collapse at a hangar being built near an airport in boise idaho one man was killed and another man um, who served in the Trump administration was crit- critically injured on Monday in Washington, D.C. after an hours-long crime and carjacking spree. Ooh. Former President Donald Trump affiliated committees spent $27 million on lawyers' bills. A friend group of the House Republicans have weaponized a long-standing voting tradition, a way to block their own party's legislation, raising the threshold for bills to pass to supermajority. Gosh. A new campaign finance report showed 50 million raised, but only 3.5 million left on hand for the main super PAC backing Nikki Haley's presidential bid. Margaret Roby says there's no way to feel sad about the snub. She says she's blessed. She's not worried about that Barbie music movie. Y'all need to let it go. Mar- Margaret Roby will always be working. For 56 critically ill and wounded Gazans, including several children, the road to crucial medical care began Tuesday at an airfield in Egypt. Some supporters of a far-right trucker convoy are headed toward the U.S.-Mexico border and have expressed violent rhetoric before planned events on Saturday. Organizers of the group are stressing nonviolence. I don't. I mean, I don't know what's going on in Texas. Some people say it's a trap by the FBI to get them down there. I guess we'll see on Saturday. FCC is moving to explicitly, 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 explicitly criminalize almost all robocalls. Yes, Lord, please. Hey, robocalls. A civil rights group alleges that North Carolina public schools are systematically marginalizing the LGBTQ youth with new state laws that bar certain sex-related intru- instruction in early grades and limit athletic participation for trans students. Boy, civil rights have changed. A California man pleaded guilty this week to one count of stalking after sending a woman anti-Semitic and racist messages over a 14-month span. A group of U.S. citizens have filed a federal lawsuit charging the Hamas-led massacre in Israel on October 7th was masterminded and funded by Islamic Republic of Iran. So they continue to say Iran's behind that. Hence those soldiers getting killed by in Jordan the other day. Alec Baldwin pleaded not guilty to the involuntary manslaughter charge in 2021. And of course he is. All right, what else we got here, y'all?
The House passed a $78 billion tax package that includes an expansion expansion of the child tax credit. It now leads the sen- to the it heads to the Senate now. Walmart is converting 150 of its large format stores over the next five years. Converting them to what? The suspect accused of killing his father and displaying his decapitated head in a YouTube video has long been obsessed with conspiracy theories. Um, The fact that YouTube let that dude do that, like YouTube, y'all don't even let me play music. But this man was able to display his dad's head. Like, come on. YouTube will copyright me so fast over some music, but I can put a whole... Come on. (sighs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four people in Washington state, they have been tested this month for a rare fungal infection that can be deadly. Candida auris, whatever, that's what it is. People who ate moderate amounts of kimchi daily are at a lower risk of... Kimchi is so disgusting. But yeah, you're at a lower risk for obesity if you want to smell like rotten cabbage every day. Knock yourself out. I think we got most things covered when we start getting back to Taylor Swift and Kelsey. You know, we've got it all covered here. All right, let me give y'all a black history fact because come on, man. You gotta, you can't, like, come on. I'm gonna say Black History Month and I ain't spitting no black history facts. That ain't cool. Let's see if I can find any. All right. Here we go. On February 4th from 6 to 9. I don't know, not that one. All right, and this happened today. On this day in 1865, the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution was passed, abolishing slavery. How slavery continued after the 13th Amendment's abolished slavery is unbeknownst to most people. Obviously, capitalism. Um, Here is the 13th Amendment here. Abolishing it. In 1866, a year after the amendment was ratified, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, Tennessee, and South Carolina began to lease out convicts for labor, which is interesting because I'm going to talk about that today in our story time. This made the business of arresting black people very lucrative. Thus, hundreds of white men were hired by these states as police officers, their primary responsibility being to search out and arrest black people who were in the violation of black code. Basically, black codes were a series of laws criminalizing legal activity for black people. Through the enforcement of these laws, they could be in prison. Once arrested, these men and women and children would be leased to plantations or they would be leased to work at coal mines or railroad companies. The owners of these businesses would pay the state for every prisoner who worked for them prison labor. It's believed after passing the 13th Amendment, more than 800,000 black people were part of the system of re-enslavement through the prison system. The 13th Amendment declared that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist. So that's how they got away with that. It says neither slavery nor involuntary. Catch that T. At the same businesses that lost slaves after the passing of the 13th Amendment, this system of convict labor is called peonage. 
the majority of white Southern farmers and business owners hated the 13th Amendment because it took away slave laborers as a way to appease them. The federal government turned a blind eye when the Southern states used this clause in the 13th Amendment to establish the Black Codes. Some examples of Black Codes in Louisiana, it was illegal for a Black man to preach to Black congregations without special permission and writing from the president of the police. If caught, he would be arrested. If he could not pay the fine, which were believed to be high, he would be forced to work for an individual or go to jail. If a black person did not have a job, he or she could be arrested and imprisoned on the charge of vagrancy or loitering. In South Carolina, if the parent of a black child was considered vagrant, the judicial system allowed the police and or government agencies to apprentice the child to the employer. As the only admin... Okay, so we got that. So, yeah. That's your first Black History Fact of the Month. There will be many more to come. Let's see. I don't think I had anything else on there. Let me... Oh, yeah. So, I was watching Thousand Pound Sisters, and it went down on there. Like, Amy is having a whole meltdown. I think she has, like, postpartum. Tammy, she losing his weight and dealing with her husband dying. And it was just very, it was very given Emmy Award winning TV. Just stop talking to me like you've lost your mind. It's the last night of vacation, and after dinner... I was trying to help Amy because she couldn't get Glenn to go to sleep and calm down. So I was just telling Amy, okay, go through the handbook. Have you fed him? Have you changed his diaper? Is he cold? But she didn't like being told what to do. And that's just where it spiraled out of control. Come here, Glenn. Let's go bye-bye. You're not going to damn place with those boys. You're not my goddamn boss. Do you think you're everybody's goddamn boss, man? But you're not. You are not making my son drive you either. I'm not making your son do a damn thing, Amy. Get the f*** out of my face. Man, I'll get your hands off of my f***. barely take care of themselves let alone trying to take care of two kids under three like it's just get these people in Emmy though because they acting they butt off um yeah that was kind of all we had on that let's see what else I got y'all 
See what else is going on around here. Yes, we made it through the front the first month of the year. So the parents of the OnlyFans model, Courtney Clinney, is arrested in connection to their daughter's murder case. Let's see what this is going on. A murder case. Miami-Dade prosecutors confirmed. Online records from the Travis County Sheriff's Office in Texas show Kim and Deborah Clinney were booked Tuesday afternoon and face unspecified felony charges from out of state. The parents of Courtney Clenny, the former social media and OnlyFans model, accused of fatally stabbing her boyfriend in their Edgewater condo back in 2022, were arrested in connection with the murder case. Miami-Dade prosecutors confirmed. Online. So that was, I'm assuming they tampered with some kind of video evidence, but. I'm, I'm wondering what's going to happen with that whole situation all right Let's see what else is happening on here we talked about that syphilis y'all better be careful out there all right let's get into these reddits What's the most sing what's the single most you'll understand it when you're older thing? Pain. Arthritis when it gets cold. I'm telling you, I did so much walking when we went up to the beach, like hours of walking on the beach, uneven sand, swim shoes, the most terrible support. And my legs felt cool every day. I mean, I had a little soreness, but that was it. But then when I came back in the cold, I can't walk 10 minutes without my knee hurting in the cold. So definitely cold pains. Somebody said choosing your battles. How limited your own perspective is is something you can really only learn with age. Sometimes old people have terrible perspectives. It's better to be alone than be in bad company. How fast time really goes. Yes. The importance of good posture and stretching as I sit up now. The sitting outside in nice weather just doing absolutely nothing is a gift. Yes. And I'm I'm planning on mastering that this spring and summer. I'm going to lot, lots of sitting out. When freaking Lent comes, I'm going to get back into actually reading a book. Because I'm putting down social media, so it'll be nice. The joy of a good mattress. I don't even know how I slept on some mattresses in the past. Sex won't make them love you and a baby won't make them stay. Amen. That turning 18 doesn't make you an adult, neither does graduating. Getting your first place, getting married, having a baby is kind of a gradual thing. And then one day you're excited because your favorite variety of potatoes are on sale and you go, oh, this is adulthood. It might not make you an adult, but them bills is going to remind you that you got. Them baby crying is going to remind you. All right. If you suddenly had an infinite amount of money, what's the first thing you'd buy? Land and, yeah, land and more land. Buy a lot of land. Somebody said their own place to live. Get my teeth fixed so I don't hurt anymore. Dang. 
good toilet paper, Congress. Somebody said a funeral for their mother. I take my cat and dogs to the vet. The cats are struggling. Somebody said a lawyer. Oh, you need a good lawyer on your retainer if you had that money. Somebody said they'd pay all the country's medical debt. A car that actually works. Amen. Retiring. Retiring would be the best part. That would be the best part. Here y'all go with these crazy questions. I'm not even going to read it. Which bodily sensation feels better than an orgasm? <sighs> I mean, it's hard to beat, but there's things that can probably be on a scale from one to an orgasm. And that'd be like taking your bra off after a long day, getting in a bed with some fresh clean sheets, nice shower, nice hot shower, just that kind of thing. Somebody said when you go to the hair salon and they shampoo. No, I don't want to go to a hair salon. Working night shift, shift in the rain and cold and having a hot shower and in the bed. Yeah, when it's a rainy day on nights and you go home and go to bed, it's a bomb. Clean sheets after shaving your legs. Big stretch after big stretch. Like y'all just y'all must really don't have any good O's because this is kind of crazy. Somebody said back strap. Back scratching, scalp massage, scalp massages are nice. Peeing, yes, peeing after you've been holding it for a while. Yes. Men of Reddit, what's something girly that you do that you're too ashamed to admit? Shouldn't we consider girly, but I have a whole skincare routine I follow twice a day. Twice a day, dang. I don't drink much alcohol, but if I do, it's fruity. I prefer to pee sitting down. I enjoy romantic comedies and musical theater. I give myself pedicures. I don't use toenail polish or anything, but I take care of my feet. I sometimes need a teddy bear to sleep comfortably. I'm, I'm questioning that. That's definitely a little strange. So let's go ahead and jump over to these story times. Don't worry. When Lent comes, y'all have so much longer reddits. Like the reddits will be so much longer. Let's see here. See what would put on the horizon. You gotta have an horizon. Together, bet she 
scoop me, we pulling up, we riding there, it's about a 35 minute drive, and I remember about 20 minutes into the drive, she was like, have you ever been to, let's say her name is Ashley, Ashley's house, and I was like, no, nah, this is my first time, and she kind of giggled, I didn't know what the giggle was about, I didn't think nothing of it, I was like, whatever, she's a goofy girl, I didn't think nothing of it, so we pulled up, and I got my little two bottles in the hand, you know, you don't show up to a party empty handed, so I got my two bottles in my hand, we walking up, I'm happy, excited, and as I walk in, I immediately get this whiff of roach infestation, yes, roach infestation, your boy has a real bad phobia of roaches, I've already expressed that on here, but when you have a fear of roaches, or a fear of anything, you kind of know when you're around it, so me, I know it by the smell, so I'm standing at the doorway like this, like, in the doorway, like, on the where you put your shoes at, just froze, looking around, and my homegirl, who I was with, she was like, what's wrong, what's going on, what, what's up, and I remember I leaned over, not loud, because I, I didn't want to be rude, but I leaned over, and I was like, there's a rope infestation here. And she busted out laughing, like she started cracking up, like tears coming out of her eyes. Crack. She was like, "You do?" She was like, "You are crazy, funny." Da, da, da. She's like, she always says that I'm a funny guy. So she's busting out laughing, cracking up laughing. But I'm dead serious, straight face, not get laughing, not giggling. I'm just communicating. There's a roach infestation here. So she was like, "No, don't. Let's not leave. Let's not leave. Let's just chill for a little bit, and then we'll leave a little later." I was like. I remember I was just shaking my head like this isn't gonna go good. So this is the townhouse, so you gotta kind of go up the stairs to get to where the where the, the main stuff is. So when we get up there, I remember I was like, I'm gonna just stand over here in this corner and I'm gonna just look down at my feet so I won't see nothing because I was like, I know they're here. I smell them. So I was, I'm just gonna stand in the corner and I'm gonna just look down so I won't have to look out to the abyss and see what it is that I know is here. As I'm standing in the corner, I just so happen to just glance up because you know, people's walking by, so I glance up and y'all, I just see like a bang. You know, it's like a look like in the movie, bang, and it kind of like scurried away. And I was just like looking at the corner of my eye like, no, that's not, I, that's not what I just saw. In a matter of seconds, another one, another one going across the wall. And I was just like, so my other homegirl who actually invited me to the party, she comes over and was like, thank you for coming, I, I, I go in the kitchen and get a cup so I can make you a drink. Bet. So I trot my way over to the kitchen, hit the lights flip, on the cabinets, on the wall, on the refrigerator top, I freak out. I'm running through the kitchen, waving my hands, da, 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 like trying to like make sure they're not on me, da, 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 pulling off my shirt. Because again, why? I have a phobia of roaches. So, this rubs her the wrong way. So she comes to me and she was like, why are you doing all this in my house in front of my company? Da, 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 da. And I was like, I remember I was like, sweetie, I don't really care. Sweat, I'm sweating at this point. Sweat, armpit sweat in a full anxiety attack. I'm like, sweetie, I don't care about your company. Like, I really I really don't care about your company right now. I was like, I'm in a whole anxiety attack because you had me in an environment that you know has my phobia. Like, your house is, your, you have a problem. And I was like, you invited me over here knowing that I have a phobia of roaches. I was like, you thought, what you thought, you, you was gonna be able to hide them? They don't hide, you can't tell them what to do. They're nosy, actually. She gets in her feelings about it, and she just ends up telling me to leave. She was like, well, you need to go there. You done made all this um, stir in my house and got everybody looking at me crazy. And so my homegirl who I drove with, she was just like, let's just go. Let's just go. Party's over. And she's still kind of giggling. We get in the car, and I'm just like, I was like, why, why are you laughing? What's so funny? She was like, I knew she had roaches. She was like, I don't even know why she invited you. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, well, why did you let me come? What's my coworker? <laughs> he was cracking me up. He's like, there's roaches here. Listen, if you got roaches, don't invite me to your house either. Because I ain't trying to take none back to my house. I'm checking my pockets, my hoodie, like whatever. I mean, just, you know, I think that some people that do have roach infestations, they think people are cool with them. 
but I'm not. So I might need to add that to my thing. If you have roaches, don't invite me because I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm not drinking nothing. If you can come in and smell the smell, that sweet, nasty little roach smell, yeah, I can see if you saw one or two, but if, if they live in every in the walls and the cabinets, nah, man. As a matter of fact, your landlord's foul for it. He's turning Tyson's food. He's turning Tyson's food. A hidden, intricate web links hundreds of popular food brands to work done by U.S. prisoners. A two-year Associated Press investigation found that everything from grains, meat, eggs, and milk had been grown, harvested, or produced by incarcerated people. And their labor finds its way into the supply chains of some of the most recognized brands and largest food companies in the world. We followed as cattle raised at the Louisiana State Penitentiary were transported to a meat processor in Texas. From there, the beef ended up in the supply chains of McDonald's, Burger King, and major grocery stores. I feel like I had became a slave, a product of, 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 of the convict system, because everything that I was doing was profiting the prison. The 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution abolished slavery and involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime. We spoke to prisoners who were working on the same plantation soil where slaves toiled more than 150 years ago. Many were making pennies an hour. Some were getting nothing at all. Others were being contracted out to private companies or taking part in work release programs. Prisoners can sometimes be punished for refusing to work, even thrown into solitary confinement. Because anytime you bump it... And if they are hurt on the job, they often have little recourse. They aren't eligible for workman's compensation, um, nor are they protected by other uh, worker safety laws because they're not considered, quote unquote, employees. I'm going to have to figure out different ways to make our system a better system instead of just exploiting labor and then calling it crime prevention. The agriculture sector is just a fraction of the overall prison labor industry, which includes everything from public works to stamping license plates. They're learning a skill set. Um, they're learning to be responsible for something. They're learning to pay back their debt to society. Whoa, whoa, what? I learned that if I wanted to be better, I have to make my own way, basically. That the opportunities are here. They're not going to give them to me. The prisons and corporations benefit from inmate labor. The goods wind up in the supply chains of giants like Walmart, Target, Whole Foods, and Costco, just to name a few. The AP also found American prison labor linked to the supply chains of multinational companies such as Cargill that export goods all over the world. This is happening even though Washington has banned imports and seized goods that were produced by prison or forced labor abroad. And DHS is deeply concerned by credible and growing reports of China's state-sponsored use of forced labor and other human rights violations in the Xinjiang region. Several companies told the AP they have policies in place restricting suppliers from using incarcerated workers. Cargill acknowledged buying goods from American prison farms and said it would determine next steps. Others said they would look into the AP's findings, which revealed just how much prison labor touches many of the foods we eat. Well, that's what's funny about the United States. We'll say they're forced labor. We take in them. We do the exact same thing. Shaquille O'Neal has a restaurant where they serve chicken sandwiches and fourteen dollar cookies. Let's try it. All together, this food was fifty dollars, and the customer service was terrible. The lady at the front where I was picking up was really rude, like extremely rude. I had to call back and get her name. I think she lied because she answered the phone like I didn't recognize her voice and said, "Hold on, let me go get the girl." You the girl? Sweet potato waffle fries with shack sauce. I think the shack sauce is a thousand island dressing. At least that's what it looked like. Just to be fair, I'm going to try it out the sauce, because that sauce tastes a lot like vinegar. Yeah, it was just a sauce. This sweet potato fries pretty good. Six out of ten. 
big popcorn chicken. I'm going to try it with barbecue sauce. It's seasoned. I would go back just for that. A nine and a half out of ten. Grilled chicken Caesar salad. Ooh, I like how that sounds. The croutons are stale, but the chicken is really seasoned. I give it a six and a half out of ten. Lucille's mac and cheese. I personally don't like mac and cheese that got breadcrumb topping, so my rating might not be valid. Because it's all personal preference, but take this rating with a grain of salt. Research, I have confirmed those are cheeses on top. It's a cheeses crust. Four and a half out of ten. The Uncle Jerome is Nashville hot chicken, pickles, lettuce, and coleslaw. Well, I added the coleslaw because I like coleslaw. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Damn. finally trust chief keeps leaves ratings the only reason i said that i have not i have not ate at most of the places you've eaten but i did have this place in chicago and that freaking nasty cheeses they put on that macaroni after i said in the thing i did not want cheeses of course they still had it on there it was nasty the chicken was so so i wouldn't yeah, that. so I was like, you know what, Keith Lee's telling the truth about this stuff. Because that, yeah, it was nasty. So a few months ago, my whole family moved to the middle of nowhere for the apocalypse. They moved to rural Missouri. And whenever I say this, people are always like, why Missouri? And I didn't realize that most people don't know the weirdest bit of Mormon lore. Mormonism is technically an apocalypse religion, like it's all about the latter days. And the lore is that when Jesus Christ comes to the earth again, he's going to touch down and live in rural Missouri. <laughs> and then again, people like, why Missouri? And there's more lore about how when Adam and Eve walked the earth, they, the Garden of Eden was supposedly in rural Missouri. And there is a prophecy that all Mormons will be called to Zion, which is rural Missouri and that they will all have to pack up and move out there and it'll be like apocalyptic conditions. So there are some excited, zealous Mormons that are moving out there early and my parents happened to fall into that camp so they took all my siblings and they moved out to rural Missouri. So that's the Mormon lore that ruined my life basically. So a few months ago my whole family Who oh, no. Who knew? I know that Independence used to be the meth capital of the world, and they did have a, a lot of zombies there. So if I think of Apocalypse, I would think that that's what it would look like. Damn, him any way that you treated me right now, child. I should. Now I'm like about to try to play in my face. I'm not, I don't even it know was your over. Face. It was Why over. That's your face. Like, Hi, Miss Blanche. Where you calling from? That's okay. I'm calling from Cali. So, the dilemma that I have, right, the father of my three children, right? We okay. had a little breakup. I decided to leave. And since then, like, he's hated me so much to where the point he has turned my three children against me. Uh, not really, but he's not paying attention to their needs. Um, one of the children even won't even see me. Um, I've been taking all the necessary precautions to like try to see them and going through my own necessary therapy and stuff like that. Every time I talk to that man, 
he brings me nothing but turmoil and just craziness. But it's not about me. It's about the children. And I speak to my children here and there. Uh, they want to come see me, you know, but it's all what he puts in their head. But I'm more, mostly concerned about the one kid that I have not been able to see or talk to in a while. And it seems like he's just going down the wrong path. But the father, like, you're with someone who, how could you be with a woman that doesn't want the children's mother to be a part of their life? And for you to accept that, it's just unacceptable. How old are your kids? Um, hmm, 15, 13, and 12. It took you that long to say your kids' ages? Yes, yes, it did. I get a little bit confused, but um, that's them. And, okay. Uh, what are their birthdays? I have um, August twenty sixth. I have October sixteenth and November eighteenth. Okay, you you kind of. I know. You get involved in these children's lives? I have been trying to, yes. Here and there, yes. I raised them up until the split came. They came to live with me, like, after, like for a year or so. Then things have happened. But, yeah, what I've happened been, to make you leave their daddy? So, are they are they mad that you broke up the family? Um, I believe so, yes. Okay. And that all falls behind. They feel like I broke up the family. So probably like that. But why did you leave him though? Because this things wasn't working out, and it was just time for me to choose me first. It was time to choose me and leave out of a situation that was not bettering me anymore. Okay, but how long were y'all married? And you couldn't wait until the kids at least got to eighteen so you could make that choice. No, no. Was he beating your ass? What? What was he doing? Was he beating you? Was he cheating? It's a whole lot of, whole lot of. So, I mean, I just didn't have time for that. What I'm trying to figure out is if the kids are obviously affected by you putting you first, I can understand because divorces are really hard. What I'm saying is you couldn't have slept in a different room until it was time, until they got out. Because, I mean, for you to, and you haven't really given me any information. I just had a girlfriend tell me a couple weeks ago she just left her husband because of whatever we was like well what'd he do he wasn't doing enough well what's enough she couldn't even say it what is it that you needed well like i said at that point it was just time to girl you weren't messing with nobody else absolutely not no absolutely not no absolutely not so let me okay so he's an older he's older than me right he's like older than me okay why you decided to uproot and just fuck up the family? Um, I didn't fuck up the family. First of all, I was building the family with him. I gave him things that couldn't nobody else give him. I showed him love, everything else. It wasn't about no money, no nothing, no any of that to me, for me. So, I was raising the children, taking care of the children, doing this and all that. He gave me some money. That's what he's supposed to do. We was a family. Went through hard times. Uptown, this time, and all that, but I survived side with not a kid. I never wanted nothing from him, but real love is what it was for me to him. Building a family with him. You understand? Building my own family. So, what he ventured out and did is on him. So, for me, I stood, I stood there, I sticked it out I, because it wasn't nothing but love for me to him. And it was for love for him to me, too. So, I don't why, know what happened. Why you, why you, okay, so you're still not telling me. Your kids are obviously pissed at you because... I'm not, okay, okay, I'm going to give you the... Okay, this is the farm, right? So, I'm living... We live in an apartment complex, right? Do you know when, when I decided, decided to leave where he went? Right next door to somebody that was supposedly... A, that was a friend to me, okay? And whenever she was trying to like, I was telling him when we were together... But what I'm saying is, I broke up the friendship with her because I'm like, what? She gonna tell me, oh, why you treat that man like that? You shouldn't do that. He's a good man. Boom. After that, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, let me back up from you. But like I'm saying, so you think he was cheating? You think he was cheating? Absolutely, with the next door neighbor. Because guess where he is now? With the next door neighbor. I'm not gonna write it off. That's what happens when you not. That's the listen. No. Listen to me. No. No. So you're saying, you're saying that what? he was sleeping with the next door neighbor? Absolutely. That's where he is now, ain't he? 
they're now complicit to where they are, to where they're just moving along, or whatever case may be. And he's not paying attention. Why don't that, you fight for custody for your kids? Okay, I did try and I got the tour because I filled out the paperwork. I went to a courthouse. At this time, they said there was nobody there to help me. I'm like, what do you mean? I, you, I you can't afford a lawyer? I, uh, no, I cannot. Nope. You're going to have to. You're going to have to read, okay? And you're going to have to figure out how to get custody of your children. You haven't really given me any reason as to why you decided to break up your family. Because it was time to go, that's why. Well, you didn't ask your kids. I didn't have to ask them anything. They came with me. I didn't have to ask them anything. They're, I didn't have to ask them anything. The one who's messing it up is not me, it's you. You sure you just weren't jealous? This is a whole bunch of goobly guys. Uh, if you've been looking for a reason to not to come to Bali, this is it. Bali's off the list. I'm good. Just on add that. pepper. Uh, yeah, I'm good on that. I don't. That's cool. I know those spiders live there. Australia has some huge spiders too. I won't be going down under. Uh uh. Can't do it. Listen, phobia unlock spiders, roaches, rats. If you have these things, do not invite me to your house warming, okay? Yes, but I'm inviting y'all back tomorrow because, you know, the mess is, my, my husband calls it his morning mess. We'll be back. See ya.